Hey, what is going on everybody? It's your favorite introvert here. And today I am doing a video based off of a comment I received. And that comment is, how do you adjust shutter speed after putting on filter or did you have auto shutter speed selected? Well, the answer to that is I do not use auto shutter to choose my shutter speed. So in this video, I'll be describing my process for choosing the correct filter. So let's get into it. I base my filter need off of the desired frames per second or FPS and get my shutter speed twice that of the frame rate to produce that smooth motion blur. I then select the proper filter that will put my exposure between the histogram brackets. If you don't have histogram up on your screen, you should as it is very helpful in ensuring you have the best exposure for your shot. Let's talk about the histogram for a moment. If you don't know, this is what will tell you whether or not you are underexposed or too dark, overexposed being too bright, or just right by filling the graph. This is the quickest way to tell you're properly exposed and good to go. There's other tools that DJI offers, like overexposure zebra stripes, but I find these to be too distracting and takes away focus from my target. For most drones like the Spark, Mavic Air, and Mavic Pro, the exposure will have to be near your desired look or you will run the risk of reducing quality by boosting values in post. If you had to choose, I would underexpose slightly as you can't get back data once it is lost to overexposing that shot. Overexposure is most common when trying to capture the sky and the ground in the same frame, especially when it's cloudy and overcast. For most shots, filming the ground while sunny and without the horizon and sky, in view the ND16 should work just fine. If you plan on having the sky in view or flying over water while the sun is reflecting, then using an ND32 should be your best starting point in that situation. Take into account that these recommendations are only for the fixed aperture drones and cameras. There's more in-depth planning for cameras like the X5S or X7. I hope that answered your questions. If you have any additional questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Give a thumbs up if you liked the video, and if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.